Hello everyone and welcome to this live stream on the topic of psychological barriers and fears related to learning foreign languages. Um, I'm Kate, I'm your own language learning expert um, here at Promova and I am going to invite my co-host, um, um, social psychologist and the mentor Maria Busariva from the platform Rosmova. Give me a moment while I am inviting Maria. Um, do let us know where you are joining from and how your day has been. I'm waiting for my colleague. There you go. Maria. Hi. Lovely to see you. Thank you for joining us today. With you. Great. Um, so once again, everyone, my name is Kate and this is Maria. Maria is a social psychologist and a mentor with the Rosmova. Is this correct, Maria? Yeah, it is. Lovely. Um, and we're, we're hosting this live stream here today because right now we are almost in the middle of the month dedicated to mental health. Um, and I really don't think we should only be thinking about our mental health during this month. Um, I do think that it's something we should be thinking about every day. Um, Maria, how are you feeling today? Are you excited about this live stream? I'm very excited to be talking about the psychological barriers, of course, but a little bit nervous, to be honest. <laughs> nervous? It's actually great to hear that because I am a little bit nervous as well, so it makes me feel better. Thanks. <laughs> Thank you for um, sharing. Oh <laughs> uh, yeah, absolutely. Um, so, um, Maria, you are an expert in psychology and I often think that as a teacher, I lack this background in psychology because very often my students um, come to me and they say, I am afraid of speaking or I really don't want to speak to native speakers because I don't want to be corrected or, mm -hmm. um, you know, a lot of other things. Mm -hmm. And obviously um, you can speak English, so you've learned a foreign language. Is there a story that you have related to some fears you had, I guess, when you were of learning a language? Of course, I also to speak to other languages, Spanish and German, Indeed. but English was my first language that I've learned and that wasn't my native language. Um, so I come from Ukraine and in Ukraine there is a certain school system, right, where they teach you and where they show you how to learn the language. I was lucky enough to get one teacher she was kind of uh, using a military approach with us she was very demanding and the procedure was like this for every class that we had we had to learn a text a4 text with all of the words and sentences that were written there wow. imagine me being 12 and all of my students right yeah having to learn the text and her approach was she was downgrading you for each sentence that you've forgotten or for every oh, mistake yeah. that you've made uh, even like if you make a mistake but it still makes sense you're still being downgraded yes okay. so each mistake even if it is a small mistake you get a downgrade, like it's <laughs> minus one, minus one, minus one. So like we have a 12th grade system in Ukraine, right? I couldn't get above eight because of course you can't remember everything. Of course and, you can't. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, I said that I was lucky enough to have her as a teacher, right? But of course it was a bit annoying and frustrating. I'm, I'm sure it was. I, I don't know. I think I'm kind of lucky in this respect because I, I also, I grew up in the same educational system. We also had to learn texts. Mm. But I started learning languages when I was very young and I was allowed to improvise oh. and I wasn't down for mistakes. So I think it helped a lot. Yeah. Um, 
but I, I can't imagine the stress you were going through because it feels like, you know, you had to simply learn it without even understanding it. Exactly. But there is always a but, right? <laughs> That's what I was going to say. I was looking for something positive there. Like... Exactly. Exactly. So um, five years went by and I had to pass a test, like the state examination right. for language learning. Yeah. Um, and maybe Maybe actually we can ask our viewers if they had similar experience with very strict teachers, right? I think so, um, yes. Guys, let us know if you have the same background story with strict tutors. So, um, yeah, the positive side of the story. Five years later, I had to do the examination. And I, like, you have to speak freely on one of the topics that you have on your list. And I got a topic. And I had at first no clue what I should be talking about. I was like stressed, okay, grammar, okay, language, okay, what should I say? But at the same time, I all of a sudden remembered the text I had to learn mm -hmm. and I seemed to be very fluent in it, you know? So yeah. the memory still worked and the stress that she put us under had worked out well. But yeah, that was the first part of the story. And of course, as a psychologist, we always have the second part, right? Maybe yeah, how to absolutely. overcome it if you didn't have lucky experiences like I did. Oh, I yeah. think that someone already had a similar experience and coming from Ukraine. I am. Nice. Oh, it's always interesting for me yes. to read the stories of people, you know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, Content absolutely. As well. Awesome. So yeah. Um, if you would like, guys, I can share with you some tips and tricks how to overcome those strict teachers. I love that. I would love that. I need to Perfect. know this as a teacher. That's awesome. Maybe let's wait. Maybe let's ask people to put let's. ones into our chat so we know that let's. they are interested in it as well. Yeah. Yeah, we but have people from Golia, from Kazakhstan, Uzbekistan. Wow. Guys, thank you for joining. While we're waiting for your stories, um, I'm just going to say that I really think you should listen up, um, to us until the end, because in addition to lots of useful insights from Maria on how to overcome the fears and barriers, we have a couple of special offers for you. So from Rosmova, which is a platform where you can find a therapist, the special offer of a 35% discount on the first session with a therapist. It will be available with a special promo code Promova and the links will be available in the stories and in the um, profile. And also from us, you are getting, from Promova, you are getting um, a special discount of, um, for one-on-one -on -one lessons with tutors. Um, you will need to enter the promo code Rosmova and the links will also be available in the stories and in the um, bio. Um, so Maria, have we I seen... I saw already some ones actually, Kate. Great, okay. So I will dive deeper into the second part of the story or how Let's to overcome that. the strict teacher. Yeah. Of course, what it is a strict teacher, right? They are like a critic and we are afraid of making a mistake. And each mistake becomes very crucial to us, like a downgrade, downgrade, downgrade. Yeah. I was lucky enough to get another teacher and she wanted us to talk. She was interested more, not in a form, not in grammar and everything correct, correct, correct. She wanted to listen to our stories and what we have to say. And it was already inspiring for me. And I step by step managed to overcome this fear. But of course, as a mentor myself, uh, supporting people in learning languages, I understood, hmm, maybe there is a hint in this process. And we should work on our statement in our mind. Okay, every mistake is that's or every mistake minus great we are not in school anymore right yeah. so the grades are not important that much i think i lost you for a second no yeah no i can hear it. there was a breakup for a moment but awesome. i think we can hear everything yeah so in order to overcome this fear, we need to face the reality, right? Yeah. To understand that we are not adults anymore and to see what is my goal. 
Yeah, I, when I speak to my students, when they talk about the fear of making mistakes, I often talk to them about growth mindset, mm -hmm. which, you know, is, is quite trendy in education now. And basically the growth mindset is about um, thinking that our abilities are not set in stone, they're not mm -hmm. fixed. Yeah, and we can change them. We can grow and develop, mm -hmm. and we actually learn from our mistakes. I really like this thought because, to be honest with you, when I was a teenager, I was also really afraid of making mistakes. It made me feel really mm -hmm. bad. Mm -hmm. But right now, I kind of, I quite, I don't want to say I like mistakes. Mm -hmm. I like challenges. I like opportunities because yeah. they help us grow. But it is, it is truly stressful. Um, so, I think. I don't know, correct me if I'm wrong, I think one important aspect in your teacher who you liked is the fact that she was really supportive, she was really interested yeah. in what you had to say. Mm. So it's also about the attitude quite a lot, is it? Yeah, it, it yeah. is. I read also an interesting comment in our chat. It did. So time mm. correcting learners. Yeah. And I don't know, uh, do you agree with this? I mean, I agree partially. Mm that you need to focus on the conversation with people who are learning, right? And to support them. Yeah. But sometimes yeah. learning, maybe it can be useful as well. So they True. learn something new. True. Okay, I, so it's we have also a request to speak slower, which yeah. we can implement, I think. I, think I tend to run. Can do that. Yeah, um, I think that when we get excited, and I find this topic exciting, we tend to speak faster. So yes, yes. let's speak uh, more slowly. Um, about mm. mistakes, I wanted to say that when I teach teachers, um, mm -hmm. we often talk about the type of activity that we do. And mm -hmm. if our aim is to practice a specific grammar form or a word and mm -hmm. um, you know it's very mechanical and then it's okay to correct right away but very often like your second teacher did mm -hmm. you know if we are more interested in what the people have to say we shouldn't be correcting yeah. and there is an important lesson here for the students because I also often I have students who come to me and say, I want to be corrected all mm -hmm. the time. Mm -hmm. and, and I say, it's not exactly how it should work. Um, I am so... myself this type of student. You I are. Always, yeah, now I'm learning Why? Spanish and improving it. And I say okay. to my teacher, please correct me every time. I want to know more. Okay. Mm. Do, you, do you feel okay being corrected all the time? Well, it's interesting i think i do feel okay ish okay. yeah because i have this aim of being not perfect but of improving myself right yeah, yeah. so that's why it's important but i notice as well that with her of course it's my third language that i'm learning we have more yeah. free and of course, yes. she doesn't correct me every time when we are talking about something very important, like, I don't know, my adventures or my friendships yeah. or stuff like this. Yeah. It makes a lot of sense. I can understand that. Mm. Um, mm. While I was listening to you, it's interesting. Mm -hmm. I read a comment mm -hmm. from somebody in Kazakhstan mm -hmm. that they had a similar situation to yours. Okay. And yes, I think our educational system are quite similar. That's why. Mm -hmm. um, I can also see comments from people in Brazil, in Morocco. Let us know, guys, if your educational system is the same and if your teachers wanted you to learn texts by heart and if your teachers correct you all the time. I can also see an interesting comment. People are saying that for them, correction is very important. Mm -hmm. um, so, yes, I think if we know our goal, like you said, mm -hmm. um, it's really a good thing. Um, listening to your story, I think 
because this was one of your first experiences of learning a language. Yes. It kind of gives you the background and I am not an expert in psychology, but I've heard a lot about how our previous experiences impact our future. Um, do you feel that it's the same in learning, that the first experience of learning a language shapes how you feel later and gives you the fears? Uh, yes, I do believe in it. Mm -hmm. And of course, talking to my mentees, I know that it is usually the case and yeah. sometimes we don't even realize no. why do we think like this? Mm. Just a certain statement that we believe in, but yeah. we don't know where it comes from. Is, is it because we don't realize, we don't remember? We kind of heard it somewhere, mm -hmm. but we don't know how to attribute it, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, well, um, let's maybe ask our audience from what age they started learning the second language, right? Um, because it's interesting to know mm. from the psychological point of view. And I can add, meanwhile, of course, the first experiences that we have, we are usually very young, like yeah. in Ukraine we with six, in Germany, I know as well, they start learning the second language very early on in some of the Latin American countries as well. Mm -hmm. And as children, we tend to forget yeah. our bad experiences mm. because emotions are very strong, especially when you are a child. You see and you perceive the world in bright colors, right? Everything is ten, ten times bigger. Yeah. So we tend to forget the experience itself. Mm -hmm. But we tend to remember that we need to save ourselves. We need to be in a safe environment for us. So our mind creates a certain statement for us that we continue to believe. So it forms our beliefs. Mm -hmm. And then we can store our beliefs in our mind because it's like a big computer. But we don't remember the emotion anymore, even though it still okay. lives in our body. That's, that's why every time when we make mistakes, we have a certain feeling inside of us. And of course, if you can't figure it out on your own, you can seek for professional help, right? And with the discount that you've announced, people can search for a therapist on Rosmova and see for true. themselves. That's what I was going to say, that very often um, we feel something but we don't necessarily realize it and mm -hmm. as a human being i don't think i have the instruments to find out mm -hmm. where it comes from so um i do um sometimes speak to a therapist about things like this and i feel mm -hmm. that it really helps mm -hmm. to dig mm -hmm. into the reasons um so yeah i find it really helpful personally um, while we are speaking, I was reading the comments and I'm really happy mm -hmm. to see that the people are saying that now it's changing and now teachers are more tolerant awesome. and that the teachers aren't correcting them this much uh, or mm -hmm. not as strictly. It's also quite interesting to see some people are saying that they start learning English at the age of 10. So uh -huh. I think you had an earlier experience. Yeah. Uh, I did as well. I started when I was six also, uh, or maybe even five. Mm -hmm. um, do, you, do you think it has a lot of impact? Um, when Because I know there's a lot of debate, like when we start learning a language, if it's five or ten, mm -hmm. does it? Well, I, I tend to believe that it has a certain effect on us, of course, mm -hmm. and I, there is a neuroplasticity. I don't know if, if it is an English word as yeah. well like this, if it yeah. is. But um, when we are younger, we can easily understand other words and we perceive them. We don't have this barrier of only one language. And when we get older, of course, our barriers grow 
and it mm -hmm. can be more difficult for us to learn yeah. something new. Thus, I personally mm -hmm. support learning from earlier stages of your life. Yeah, me too. And yeah. for myself, I made a decision that my children would speak definitely a second language, yeah. right? Not only the first one, from an yeah. early age, so to speak. Yeah. Yeah, totally, totally agree with you. I, I, I think it always helps, at, you know, even neuroplasticity. Mm -hmm. um, we've been speaking quite a lot about the past and the mm -hmm. reasons for fears and the background, where it mm -hmm. all comes from. I think there's one more very important aspect, and this is um, the present and the future and mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. one of the one of the things that i often hear it students come to me and say i want to learn vocabulary i want to speak faster because i often mm -hmm. speak and i stop and i think about what to mm -hmm. say um, and i find it quite interesting and um, do let us know guys if this is how you feel if you feel that you are speaking and you stop to think and that you'd like to speak faster because we might have a trick for you um it, it's very interesting because when i teach people whose first language i understand i ask them to record an, a one minute audio in english mm -hmm. and a one minute audio in their first language yeah and there is a special thing it's an average average rate of speaking mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. english is generally it's about 150 words a minute Italian and Spanish, they are a lot faster. So when Italians um, mm -hmm. come to learn English and they speak English, they speak more slowly, naturally, and they don't feel okay. Oh. Vietnamese and Japanese are slow languages, slower mm -hmm. languages. So when people from those countries start to learn English, they need to learn to speak faster because they don't naturally do this. Mm -hmm. But that's about the language. But we also have our own rate of speaking. And I'm sure that if you and I speak Ukrainian, we will not speak at exactly the same pace. It will still be different. And, yeah. you know, like, if we think about it, are we being realistic? Do we, are we trying to speak more, more are we trying to speak faster mm -hmm. um, just because of wrong expectations? And, you know, Expectations, I think it's quite a huge, uh, or self-image, quite a huge area in psychology. Mm. Is this something you think we can work with, we can deal with? Yeah, actually, I can very much relate to the experience with Italians and Spanish-speaking people. <laughs> yeah. My, I see myself trying to learn those languages um, and trying to speak with natives. And towards your second question, um, of course, this is actually a very good exercise that you are giving people from the psychological point of view. Because in my mind, I feel like, oh, I speak so slow when I speak English. When I speak Ukrainian, I'm so fast, but mm -hmm. I can never see the reality. Mm -hmm. And it's a good reality check. Hey, listen, this is yeah. you doing this audio recording, speaking like this. This is you doing the other audio recording using the foreign language. Yeah. Does it feel the same to you? And then all of a sudden a person feels ha, huh, or not even feels, but understands it's the same. And then yeah. this pressure that we are putting on ourselves can go away because you see the reality like it is. Um, yeah, I think it's quite a good exercise in general to try and look at ourselves. Um, I think it can be quite stressful, though, because I don't know, you know, recording your own voice. You, I personally um, instantly hear my own mistakes and hear the things I'm doing wrong. Is it, is it what happens to you as well? I'm laughing because... 
Uh, I mentioned before I speak several languages and um, someone was asking what is the second one. The second one was German mm -hmm. and I tend to speak German, English and Spanish, all the languages in one week. And sometimes wow. I, I tend to say that for me, when I speak English, I forget that other languages exist. exist, okay. exist. And then when I forget, and I don't remember one specific word in English, but I know it in German and I feel lost, you know? So it, it can be very interesting that when I forget the word, I tend to pressure myself and say, hey, how could you forget? English was your first language, why? Mm. Mm. Yeah. But, I... of, but of course it's like talking myself down. That's why knowing the psychology, I stop myself and I say, hey, well, Maybe it's a bad day for you. Well, yeah. you remember German. That's already yeah. good enough. So, yeah. And look, I am really grateful that you are saying this thing that mm -hmm. knowing the psychology, you still do those things to yourself. You still, you know, think, how can I have, how could I have forgotten this word? Mm -hmm. um, because it happens to me and I think, I shouldn't be doing it. I should like, you know, we know about it, but we all are people, you know, and we yeah. still make the same mistakes and this approach to be harsh towards yourself. I yeah. think it's something that uh, governmental systems wanted us to learn, right? Or any system, because we tend to focus on mistakes more. Of course, now there are mm -hmm. other learning systems where they yeah celebrate every good word yeah. that you're saying, every correct sentence that you have, but it yeah. used to be different. Yeah. I, um, again, when I train teachers, I often, you know, I have a list of criteria that we have to see in the lessons. And one, I think the most important thing is the atmosphere in the lesson, because this, this, this scientific theory that when learners don't feel okay, when their, we call it mm -hmm. affective filter is high up, yeah. they just don't take in the information. Um, mm -hmm. So that's one of the things we often, or I think we always watch mm -hmm. as a part of our lessons. Um, yeah, it's probably important in the other areas of life as well, not just learning a language. Mm -hmm. Um, I see an interesting question, but I don't quite understand it. What is the most important thing I should do if I want to speak faster as a native speaker? I, um, I think this person might want to speak as fast as a native speaker. So like to approach oh, native speaker okay. level. Mm -hmm. I see. Do you have some trips, t trips, <laughs> tricks? It's interesting. Um, I have a lot of questions questions here mm -hmm. um, a native speaker in which area because even Englishes differ um, yeah. in their pace um, and also speaking like a native but speaker I think isn't... we we need to come back to this like time perception que question as well later on yeah I think it's not only about being fast right maybe exactly. there are some other psychological reasons exactly why. Um, I often like to talk about the reasons why we want to speak like native speakers, because if we think about the modern world, out of 100% of people speaking English, only about 30%, if not less, are native speakers. So when we speak English, we are very often speaking to a non-native speaker, um, like ourselves. And it's important to make sure that we understand each other. Mm -hmm. There are, of course, situations when it's important to speak like a native speaker. Um, so mm -hmm. that's also fair. But they are not major. They are not you know, the biggest part of our life. That's so we are creating a lot of stress for ourselves, aren't we? I feel like lots of the situations where we put ourselves under stress are also unnecessary. But yeah, yeah. you need to see, you need to do self-reflection and stuff like this. But when you were talking, I also thought about the native language, right? Mm. We also make mistakes in our native languages all the time 
We do. <laughs> yes, of course. And, and at the same time, I notice with myself, I can speak very fast. I can speak slower. Mm -hmm. I can speak medium speed. And it Absolutely. all depends on my mood, on my emotions, on it the does. situation I'm in, on people who surround me. It's very dependable. And, and the other thing is when we're speaking to our friends, we speak faster than we speak in a more formal environment. Mm -hmm. So we also need to remember about that. Um, I have, I, I, I can see an interesting comment. Someone is saying that I think we like to speak like native speakers because mm -hmm. that will make us more comfortable talking. Mm -hmm. And I think it, it probably comes back to this idea of self image and public image. Um, you know, how, how the others perceive us. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, but the other thing is, you know, Coming back to the question of, I want to speak like a native speaker, fast mm -hmm. like a native speaker. Um, it's about the goals that we have um, mm -hmm. in front of, well, in front of us, the goals we're facing. Um, how can we make them realistic and corresponding to the situation? Um, I think we all have stories when we wanted to sound good as in an example I often make in the classroom if imagine you are traveling in a country um, you are in a village where nobody almost nobody mm -hmm. speaks English and you have a bad bad headache mm -hmm. so you go to a pharmacy and are you really going to say excuse me, I'm wondering if you might have something for a headache or if you're simply going to do yeah. problem, pain and things like that. Mm -hmm. So, you know, what are we looking for? What are we trying to uh, do? Yeah, that's um, true. That, you know, because, because you also you learn foreign languages. What reasons do you learn foreign languages for? Um, oh. And guys, while you're listening, while Maria is telling me about her goals, do let us know why you guys are learning foreign languages. I love this question. Mm. I think I will answer it uh, about the last language that I've learned, which was Spanish, mm. because it has a, an interesting story. Mm. So, some time ago, I listened to a very interesting YouTube video. Mm. And a person said there, if you want to win over people's hearts, learn their language, or at least learn a That's phrase lovely. or two. And me, myself, having interest in psychology, of course, I remembered it. And I was like, hmm, it's a nice hint. From now on, I will be learning every phrase in different languages in each country mm -hmm. where I go to. Yeah. And with my Spanish learning, I had some experience studying abroad and mm. I had lots of friendships with people coming from Latin America. Mm. I don't know why, but we realized that Ukrainians and Latin Americans have something in common. And mm. I was like, hmm, it's interesting. But when they talk to each other, I have no clue what they are discussing. I felt like I'm missing out. And I was like, hmm, okay, now I want to learn Spanish as well. Hmm. And after that uh, decision that I've made, I had two months of not seeing them. And I started studying the language using some apps, learning the music, learning the main words. And when we came back, they started talking to each other. And I was like, in Spanish, but I understand you guys. And they all shocked, were shocked. And I was so happy <laughs> that now we can be like a good, I don't know, friend group that speak the same language. I'm sure. Um, while we're having this conversation, I am just getting more and more confirmation of the fact that, you know, if I have a therapist, if I speak to a therapist regularly, mm -hmm. 
I will be a more effective learner. So therapy Perfect. helps in all areas of life. I can say this as a person who mm. speaks to a therapist quite mm. regularly. So um, I'm mentioning this because if you guys are listening to us today, remember that we have special offers for you. If you go to Rosnova um, and if you're looking for a therapist, do enter a special promo code PROMOVA to get a 35% discount on the first session with a therapist. And if you're learning, if you're interested in learning a foreign language in learning English and you're looking for one-on-one -on -one lessons with a tutor, do go to Promova and we are offering a discount on our one-on-one -on -one lessons. Enter the promo code Rosmova. You will find all this, all of the links in the stories and in our profiles for Promova and Rosmova. If you're listening to us, do also follow both pages to make sure you don't miss out on the news from both Rosmova and Promova. Mm -hmm. I found a very interesting comment. Mm. My student said yesterday he has fear to speak English. How could I help him? I would like mm -hmm. to dive deeper a little bit into this topic. Mm -hmm. So guys, do any of you have fear of speaking the other language? Please put hearts or write the word fear. Mm -hmm. And while you're doing it, I will tell you not a quick way to solve the issue, but maybe to start it on your own or if you are a teacher, how to approach it with your students. So we tend to have many emotions hidden within us and fear is one of the six basic emotions that people tend to have. But this fear doesn't appear all of a sudden. It is caused by something, by an event. And of course, if you don't have psychological education, you're not a therapist yourself, you can't help a person working with their emotions. For that, they should seek professional help. But what you can do, you can talk to them about the sphere. Why do they think it exists? Why do they believe this? What will happen, right? You have to ask them or you have to ask yourself, hey, what will happen if I speak the other language? What will happen if I speak with a native? What will happen if I speak with a non-native speaker? what is this that you're afraid of are you afraid to be judged are you afraid to be corrected are you afraid of not being uh, if someone will not understand you what is this that you're fearing exactly because fear is a big concept right even if i say the word fear i'm so afraid myself having lots of experiences working with fear but if i say to myself hey I am afraid of this specific situation because this is what I think might happen with me. Then the fear becomes a little bit smaller. And this is the first step that you can do on your own. Understand that it's not the fear fears that you have, but you only fear a specific thing. And then you can work on it either together with a tutor or with a psychologist. So that would be my go-to approach in this case. That that sounds really great and it resonates with the things the techniques we have in teaching i'm i'm sure it's a different thing it just reminded me of you know setting little goals mm -hmm. which help mm -hmm. achieve yeah. uh, a bigger thing so you know with fears if if, if it's a uh, smaller fear if it's part of something then mm -hmm. it's easier to overcome and with goals it's the same if there's a big big goal in front of you there are definitely sub goals little mm -hmm. steps to this mm -hmm. and if you break this big goal down into smaller ones they are a lot more achievable and mm -hmm. they are less scary are they yeah, they are indeed they are um, I've seen quite a lot of questions. Um, let's think about those questions. If you guys have a question you'd like us to answer, do send it to us. If you have a story you'd like to share, do share it. And Maria, how about if we spend the next couple of minutes answering the questions we can see here? Sure. 
Let's do uh, I feel like <laughs> we are so excited in this topic with you that I, I still tend to rush even yeah. though I try to be uh, a bit slowlier. Um, yeah. But yeah, happy to answer the questions that people Let's have. Let's try. Um, a lot of people are saying something like, when I want to talk English, I get nervous and I forget everything I know. Oh, this is a very good one. I, 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 I love this sentence because it means that you're already very close to a solution. <laughs> <laughs> what is it? Well, um, ah, I'm so excited about this one. So mm. we were talking about emotions already with you, right? Mm. And you were talking about realistic goals and mm. expectations. Yeah. And you were saying the example that you have that you send, uh, people have to send an audio to you mm -hmm. with the speed, how they speak. So the speaking part and the test part is the rational part that you're referring to, while mm -hmm. the fear is emotional part. And I myself have a quite an example in this case. Maybe the stories help to understand you better. So mm. I was in Italy and I don't speak Italian, but mm. I, I love the language. So I had a problem with my phone. I was completely lost and I saw a policeman and I thought, okay, a policeman should help me. It is their obligation yeah. to assist people. And I was like, okay, I go to a policeman. Mm. Well, of course, Italy, Apparently where I was, it was Venice. They want people to speak Italian and they don't know English that well. Mm. I tried explaining to him in English and he couldn't understand. I started using some of the Italian words or also <laughs> couldn't understand. But I've noticed one interesting thing. I was so scared and he was looking at me and I was even more scared. Mm -hmm. And I was trying to rush and to explain to him <gasps> very fast, and he couldn't understand my English, I don't know Italian, and I, I, I was putting myself under pressure even more, mm -hmm. trying to be faster because it's a policeman, he has to be on duty now, he couldn't be dealing with me, even though he should be helping people, but he has some yeah. other stuff to do. And I realized after this experience that I was putting myself under pressure and it wasn't necessary mm -hmm. because he being a native speaker, seeing that I have a problem, wanted to help me. And apparently he was ready to give me that time that I take my time, I can be slowlier, I can wind down, I can calm down. And he was saying to me some words in Italian mm -hmm. were similar to Spanish so I could understand yeah. like, hey, calm down. But this this is a very interesting case, actually. I don't know, guys. Do you think like you can relate to it? Do you feel like you put yourself under pressure too much? Especially mm -hmm. those who are native speakers, right? How do you perceive language learners? Do That's you want them question. to be perfect all the time, right? Do you accept that they can be slowlier? Maybe that's a fan share the heart question. with us. Oh, Let's I see. Have a look. Showing some signs that some people yeah. support us here. Let Let's have a look at what the people are saying. Um, related to what you were saying, I I read a comment oh. that a couple of comments actually. People are saying that they fear that the other people will be mocking them. Okay. For okay. their mistakes and things like that. Um. Mm -hmm. See, so um, I will be sharing my thoughts as I have them. Of course, I'm trying to give some tips and tricks, right? Mm -hmm. So um, when other people mock us, why do they do it? You have to ask yourself this Good question. question. Yeah. What is their, their reason? Do they want you to be better? And the mm -hmm. second question that you have to ask yourself, is this person an authority for me? Do I respect this person to accept their words as the truth? Because it is very rarely a case that someone who is professional in something and they will judge you. I never judge people mm. when they try to speak other languages. I try to support mm -hmm. them. But yeah. 
I've done it three times already and I know how difficult it is. Absolutely. Yeah, I, I cannot think of a situation when I personally would correct somebody, a foreigner speaking Ukrainian to me, mm -hmm. unless I am teaching Ukrainian and we are practicing yeah. for accuracy. Um, and I've been looking at the comments mm -hmm. and I've heard, I've seen positive comments. I don't think I have seen anyone saying that, yes, I want people to speak my language correctly mm -hmm. only and I will correct the other mm -hmm. people. A lot of people are talking about practice 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 yeah. and we will succeed and that will stop us and our fears mm -hmm. and the fact that we can't get out of the comfort zone i quite like the idea of uh, comfort zone yeah. um it it's quite nice to be there but also growth happens when you go out of the comfort mm -hmm. zone um, that's true uh, I have also one uh, case that I see in comments sometimes. Uh -huh. People are starting to mention it, but they don't talk about it much. So this is the case about people correcting us or negative comments from other people. Mm -hmm. What happens to us when we speak, uh, when we get negative comments and some criticisms? Mm -hmm. Do you have some experience with criticism or not that relevant? Of yeah. course, I think, I think, um, funnily enough, yes, um, because I'm a teacher of English, mm -hmm. um, in a lot of cases, when I spoke to the other teachers, especially native speakers, they did correct me. Okay. And I realized that it was really beneficial for me. That's but nice. As as a living human being, mm -hmm. I felt first of all seriously embarrassed mm. because I thought I I really should have known this. Yeah. And um, so embarrassed and the other thing I felt was, you know, what are they going to think of me? They're going to think less of me. Yeah. And that's really stressful. Mm. Um do you guys guys have any similar examples when you felt stressed when somebody corrected you when you got negative feedback yeah things or, like that or maybe when you got a negative uh, feedback it was like a small sentence hey this mm. wasn't correct and you started being like i was telling about myself yeah. hey but why am i incorrect oh i'm so stupid oh god why how could i do this to myself, why did I say it? I've been learning language for six years already and yeah. stuff like this. Yeah, it, it, I don't know. Is this, does it have to do with perfectionism and setting high standards for your own self? Partially it does, mm. but it's not the only case. There is also mm. such a thing like self-esteem mm -hmm. and our own self-worth and self-perception. And I honestly believe that in such cases, when we know our value and when we get a negative feedback, we are like, okay, hmm, let me think about it. Do I believe this? Yeah, maybe I did a mistake, but then mm. we can easily move on. We just accept it as a fact and we improve on it. Mm. But when we are uncertain about ourselves and we are the worst critics for ourselves already and we hear something from the other person saying to us the thing, mm -hmm. this emotion and this like criticism expands, right? That is why it is very yeah. important to get professional support where you can share your fears or your emotions and understand where it is coming from. Because somehow I tend to analyze my own behavior and I know that when I get a positive feedback, it's mm -hmm. just a little thing for me. But when mm -hmm. it's a negative, a negative feedback, yeah. I'm like, oh God, oh God, I don't know. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Me too. I think I tend to devalue praise um, quite, a, quite a lot because it just doesn't... I don't know, maybe it doesn't give such big emotions. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. So, yeah. 
we were trying to cover some of the psychological barriers during this we conversation were. and asking and answering some questions. Um, yeah. Yeah, I can some see. Other questions that you see, which could be interesting for us. Um, I'm looking. I see. While I see the I'm comments. Looking. Someone wrote that this negative feedbacks make you forget all the yeah. English at that point. That's mm. true. And actually, there is also maybe one good hint how to overcome this thing. We were talking about emotional and rational, right, with you. Mm -hmm. And in this comment, exactly, we can see that when you make a mistake, you have a fear. And you focus on your fear and you start mm -hmm. and you continue this conversation focusing on your fear. And of course, the more you focus on it, the grower, the bigger it grows, right? And in order to help yourself, you can analyze the situation and ask yourself, what's important in this context? Is it my emotion of fears that I want to share with the other person? Mm. Or is it the other person and our conversation that makes it interesting for me in this moment? And I want to achieve another goal. That's a great one. I, I've never actually asked myself this but I, I have a feeling that it's going to help me um thanks for sharing that yeah um, while we're talking about it let me remind everyone that today in this live stream we're talking about psychological barriers and fears related to learning a language and um I am speaking to Maria, who is a social psychologist. Um, Maria is with Prosmova, which mm -hmm. is a platform where you can find a therapist. And we have a special offer for you today. Um, go to the Prosmova website if you're looking for a therapist. Enter a special promo code Promova and get a 35% discount on your first session with a therapist. And if you're interested in learning English, if you're looking for a tutor, go to our website to Promova, um, choose a tutor and enter a special promo code Prosmova to get a 30% discount on your lessons with a private tutor. Um, and we do really hope that our conversation today will help you overcome some of the fears and barriers but I honestly think it's a work in progress. It doesn't just end because you've listened to one lecture or live stream. Mm -hmm. it, it's constant work. Would you agree with me here, Maria? Yeah, I totally agree. And of course, mm -hmm. in this small live stream, we can't cover all the no. topics with you. Very unfortunate for yeah. us, yeah. but that's the reality of life. And at the same time, some people were writing um, and asking us, what could I do with this case or what could I do with the other case? And mm -hmm. if you feel like this is something you would like to change and you would like to work on your emotions, I would like to invite you to use uh, Rosmova app. There we have a test and you can use it for yourself to see what would be the best match, what type of therapy and to some therapists maybe. And also at the same time, you can text our girls in chat who are doing some support and they can search for some best uh, therapists for you based on the case maybe you can write them hey i have a fear of speaking english or i have a fear of learning this language and they can support you and give you some hints and pieces of advice That's on who to contact fascinating it, it's great to know that first of all you're not the only one having those fears and secondly that there is someone you can speak to and you know people yeah. will be ready to help you um maria i think we can kind of close this live yeah. stream in a minute. Let's take a moment to thank everyone who has been listening to us. I've seen some of the names quite regularly in the comments. Thank you very much for your participation. It's lovely. It's lovely to know that you're following and that you have stories to share. And 
Maria, to you personally, a huge thank you. It's been great for me uh, because now I know what to say to my learners when they come to That's me awesome. with fears mm -hmm. and problems. Thank you all guys for sharing your stories. I do believe that when we share a story, it's already therapeutic for us because we can meet other people who have some similar experiences. Yeah. And thank you for asking your questions and sharing your tutoring experience with us. Yeah. I think it was also very useful. Thank you. And um, thank you, Rosmova, for being here today. Thank you, Promova, for being here today. And thank you to Rosmova and Promova for the special offers, discounts on sessions with therapists and lessons with tutors. And um, go to the public profiles on Instagram and follow the link to get your discounts do learn languages, do speak to therapists. Um, that will make your lives a lot better, will it? Lovely. Thank you, Maria. Thank you, everyone. And lots of love to all of you. Hey, thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.